The Hooghly is one of the lifelines of Bengal. And in the 17th century, a lot of European traders made a beeline over here because of the fabulous products that were exported from this region and the hinterland. In fact, cruise down the Hooghly and you will find a mini Europe. Take a look. This is not just a river, it is a lifeline. A channel which has driven the story of a region. The Hooghly is one of the most historic rivers in India. A distributary of the river Ganga, it takes a long route into the Bay of Bengal. Did you know that around 300 years ago, this river was one of the most important parts of the global trade network, drawing merchants and traders from around the world. In fact, on its banks, there were a series of towns and cities controlled by Europeans, the Portuguese, Dutch, French, Armenians and the British, and together they came to be referred to as the Little Europe on Hooghly. Before colonial rule, India contributed around 25% of the global economy. Estimates are that almost half of this came from Bengal alone. Merchants from all over came to Bengal for its rich cotton and silk textiles prized by Europeans as well as Asian kingdoms such as Persia and Japan. In order to procure these textiles, Merchants set up factories on the banks of the Hooghly River to easily access the sea. The Hooghly has been for many centuries, going back I think um, to, to the period BC in fact, but has had the most significant agricultural settlements and the most significant ports, trading settlements. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going going a long way back in time. So in that sense, it is the natural place for, 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 for European settlers to, to, to focus on, sorry, European traders to settle on when they begin arriving in Bengal, even though it takes them, um, let's say, 40 or 50 years to really begin to realise that. We cruise down the Hooghly for a journey of discovery. Our journey starts in Murshidabad. This magnificent palace, which is said to have a thousand doors, is a reminder of the wealth and splendor of the rulers or the Nawabs of Bengal. In the 18th century, it was described by contemporary European travelers as a city rivaling London in size and splendor. While today, Murshidabad is a quiet heritage town located 210 kilometers north of Kolkata, the remains of its past glory can still be seen in the magnificent buildings here. Around 8 kilometers south of Murshidabad is the small town of Kossam Bazar. Known today for its two grand Rajbaris or palaces, Kossam Bazar was the main hub for silk trade around the Hooghly in the 18th century. The Europeans, as well as the Armenians, set up their factories in the town and each factory is said to have employed 700 to 800 people. Apart from factories at Kossam Bazar, the European merchants also set up their own trading settlements such as the Portuguese at Bandel, 172 kilometers south. This church is all that remains of the great Portuguese settlement of Bandel, one of the oldest European settlements along the Hooghly. Founded in the 1530s, Bandel emerged as one of the most important Portuguese centers in Asia before its sudden end in 1632 when it was sacked by the Mughal armies of Emperor Shah Jahan. While Bandel never recovered, the neighboring town of Chinsura emerged as an important Dutch settlement. The scale of trade from Chinsura can be gauged from the fact that in the 1720s, the Dutch exported 22,000 bales of silk each year, most of which was sold in Japan. While the Dutch gave up their control of Chinsura to the British in 1825, the town's Dutch cemetery is a reminder of the European presence here. Five kilometers south of Chinsura is the former French colony of Chandranagore. 
The beautiful French buildings along the riverside promenade next to the Hooghly River are a testament to its former glory. Originally founded in 1680s, Chandranagar reached the height of its glory in 1730s under the French governor General Duple. Under Duple, Chandranagar became the main European settlement in Bengal, surpassing its main rival Calcutta. But the Battle of Plassey in 1757, in which the British East India Company defeated the Nawab of Bengal, was a turning point. Chandranagar lost out to Calcutta and went into decline. Chandranagar remained a French possession till 1954 and became a part of India following a referendum. Around 20 kilometers south of Chandranagar is the old Danish settlement of Serampur of Frederiksnagar as it was known from 1746 to 1845. Like other European nations, the Danish too established their colonies in India, principally Sarampur in Bengal and Tanquiba in Tamil Nadu. The St. Olaf Church and the Danish Tavern are the remnants of the Danish legacy here. We end our journey in the European settlement which emerged victorious over all others, Calcutta or Kolkata as it is known today. The British East India Company established its factory at Fort William. The villages of Shutanuti and Kalikata, around which the town grew, were known for their fine fabrics. Interestingly, unlike other settlements, Kolkata was located on the left bank of the Hooghly River. Calcutta is chosen as the site for a more substantial English settlement at, right at the end of the 17th century, and there are several reasons for that. Um, one of the key ones is, 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 is the, the fact that it's better defended um, than the other possibilities, simply by virtue of being on the other side of the river. So Calcutta is on the left bank of the river, the, the, the east side. Up until that point, the European settlements on the river have all been on the other bank. They've been closer to um, central India, if you like. They've been more exposed to attacks from um, the Marathas or, or other political uncertainty in the period. So the, what, what's a village at that time? Calcutta is granted to the English and the construction of um, Fort um, William begins there and then the town emerges around the fort. The Battle of Plassey in 1757 marked a decisive shift in Kolkata's fortunes. First Bengal and then over time the entire Indian subcontinent came under the rule of the British East India Company. All other European settlements went into decline, while Calcutta emerged as the second city of the British Empire. Today, the Hooghly River is no longer the centre of global trade, but the magnificent buildings built along its banks are wonderful reminders of its past glory when there was a little Europe along its banks.